Hello. Let's talk about language revitalization and the unceded territory of the Selic Nation. Here's a quick summary. The Selic Nation has many names. It is called Salish, Okanagan, Okanagan Colville, Interior Salish, pardon my uh, pronunciation, Squealic, Kailachin, Argus, the language. This is spoken in Kelowna, West Bank, Vernon, Penticton, and many other places among many different communities. It is one of many languages in BC, and it is also critically endangered with less than 40 fluent elders. But there are people now learning the language and teaching the language. It is spoken from Northern Washington to Vernon to Southern BC. It is part of the Salish language family, the purple one here. It is incredibly distinct and different from one another. The reason why this language is endangered is because of the effects of colonization and residential schools which separated parents from children and also forced them to leave their culture and language. Canada eventually stopped residential schools in 1996 and now the language is just starting to come back. Language revitalization can be tricky. Often a language's status is very low and as a result, not many people will want to speak the language. While language planning and language status can help, often what is needed is a few highly motivated individuals to help with bringing the language back. Additionally, there are ways elders can help with language planning, such as organizing, language immersion, having control of the language, creating textbooks, resources, and documentation, as well as encouraging the youth, putting them into immersion camps, and the use of master apprentice training programs. But I'd like to focus on what I think are the three main types of language revitalization and the Okanagan. First, you need curriculum, which is going to lead into documentation. Paraphrasing Joshua Fishman, it starts with curriculum education and creating a small adult cohort, such as the Salish School of Spokane, which is Selic Language House. Now, I understand this can be both grassroots or from the top down. This documentation wouldn't be possible without orthography, creating a written form for Kailachin to be documented in. Another aspect of documentation done in the Okanagan is giving new words for things like computer, phones, and cars, which didn't have words previously. Their documentation is everywhere. It's on their websites, it's been recorded, it's on YouTube. There's plenty of elder stories that are still being recorded as of now. Um, now I'd like to talk about language domains, which is the creation of schools and places to speak the language. I'll play a quick clip of Michelle Johnson, who really pushed for making these language domains. Are, are really effective teaching methods. Two years ago, I approached chief and council from three different bands. And I said, give me 10 of your best people two days a week for four years, and I will give you mid-intermediate speakers, some new speakers. And each of those three bands, Penticton, Asuyus, and West Bank First Nation, they committed core funding and they supported students. Michelle Johnson is an instructor who over the course of four years piloted an adult fluency program, which apparently took 1,600 hours to complete over four years. Um, the students were very successful and they have just recently graduated, but on Zoom because of the pandemic. Here she explains more about language domains, our domain expansion. So if we wanted Sochin to live, we know that we're going to have to create what's called language domains. Once this program is done, our plan is to create full immersion workplaces with the support of the bands and leadership and full immersion schools for my students to work in. Basically what I'm getting at is that you need to have lots of adult speakers who can teach lots of schools so you can teach children. Language nests are an immersion space for toddlers. Within two years, all the staff who are teaching these toddlers will be fluent and will continue to study for 10 hours a week while also becoming a licensed daycare. They're gonna have a bunch of outdoor activities too so it sounds like it's gonna be fun. The Language Nest will also be a full-time domain of use, where only the Okanagan language is spoken and English is used as a foreign language. These toddlers are going to receive 30 hours a week of immersion. Not only is there Language Nest, but there is also an increasing availability for immersion schools, which can go all the way up to grade 12 now, and with the company of their fantastic four-year textbook. With each new speaker, we can potentially see hundreds of new speakers, uh, as Michelle Johnson says. And with more fundraising, 
we'll be able to have more and more speakers. However, you're going to need a lot of support for that as it takes $50,000 to raise just one speaker in four years. So in conclusion, the revitalization of the Celix language is looking positive, mostly because of documentation, language expansion, and the addition of more schools and teachers, and finally language nets, which are really going to boost children into becoming fluent speakers. But I should also mention the gradual increase of positivity towards the language, aka status planning. Uh, one example is the Our Living Languages display in the Okanagan Heritage Museum. They really did their best in collaboration with First Nations to create a very interesting interactive display with the language. I really recommend going there. It's in Kelowna and the hosts are great. I got to learn about the language. I spent three hours in there and I'm sure as it becomes more well known, the language will also gain more speakers. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you for listening to me and have a great rest of your day.